are on an exciting journey today. I have a bunch of recycling. I'm gonna throw up first and then we're going on a walk to Indigo to get sword catcher. Alright guys, I have got the book. As you saw, we have the Indigo Exclusive Edition, which I think makes it shiny and gold. They seem to have the other edition at the store too. I think it's normally black. It's really big, but basically, I don't think I introduced in this video, I'm going to be vlogging my experience reading this, Swordcatcher by Cassandra Clare, her first adult fantasy book. I think the first in a new series. I'm gonna try and keep this spoiler free so that if you guys are on the fence, if you want to read this or not, you can watch this video and see what I think. I'll definitely be comparing to her other books throughout because I have read all of her other books. We'll see how it compares. Maybe if I feel inclined to, I'll have a little spoiler section at the end, but you're gonna try to keep it spoiler free. It is very beautiful. It has a really cool map at the front. They included this little poster, which I don't know if I can rip it out. Oh, I guess you can. I'm gonna keep it in there. Um, I guess these are our main characters, our main love interests maybe. And I have started it and I'm already feeling like I'm relating to that meme of like starting a new fantasy book and you're just like, what the heck is going on? Trying to wrap your head around all these terms, but I'm only a few pages in. So I will be back when I've read maybe like hundred pages or so we can check in, but I'm very excited to be reading this. So I am 100 pages in to this bad boy here. You know, it is big, but I think it will still be a relatively quick read. Well, not that quick, but like, I feel like the text is not that small. And it's because Kendra Claire's writing, which I think is very accessible. I am finding that the writing is like not very different to her other books between like YA and adult. So I think it's pretty easy to get through. However, the amount of info dumping or the amount of info being thrown at it thrown at us is really crazy. It's really overwhelming for a girl like me who does not read adult fantasy books very much. I think they're normally like this. Like I'm not trying to hate on the book because I am liking it. I'm liking it. But it's just so much info. So as a little, I honestly cannot hold this book the whole time. It is too heavy. A little plot summary. So our main character, our protagonist that we're following is Kel. And we first see him as a 10 year old boy in an orphanage. And he ends up getting pulled from that orphanage and taken to the castle. <laughs> Me trying to summarize this when I don't even fully understand this world yet. But basically he gets taken to like the royalty in this world, Castle Lane. What is it called? Castellane. Anyways, and he looks quite similar to the prince, the crowned prince, Connor. So they basically get him to pretend to be the prince during this one dinner. So like, oh, the prince is sick, he can't make it. And they give him like this little magic thing to kind of help people see him as the prince because obviously he doesn't look identical and he does a good job and they're basically like, we want to offer you the job of being the prince's sword catcher which is basically the job of like his protector. So he's gonna like pretend to be the prince in certain situations in case anyone's trying to assassinate him, they're gonna, you know, kill Kel instead of the prince Connor. So yeah, just kind of like the prince's number one guy, number one guard. So we see that little intro in the prologue and in present day, Kel is still our main character and he's been with Connor for years now. They are 23 and he has this, you know, loyalty and duty to the prince. And through his eyes, we are finding out a lot about this world. Then our other perspective that we've had so far is a girl and her name is Lynn. She is giving us a different perspective. So basically there's so much 
political stuff in this so much political drama so if that's something you're into you'd probably like this i'm not really that much into it like as an example george R. R. martin is the quote on this everything i look for in a fantasy he says that was kind of a red flag for me when i saw that because i don't i never read game of thrones but like you know it's a lot of political intrigue going on that's not really my favorite so we are getting tons of that we're getting so many character introductions so many backstory on like these different families and things like that so not my favorite and it was like a little overwhelming with lynn we're finding out more about the ashkar so ashkar is a small community whose members still possess magical abilities. So we know that this, I think it was called the Sundering. Some event happens where like all the magic basically got destroyed in this land, except for the Ashkar people. So they do have some magic abilities, but they're basically treated like lepers. Like they are sanctioned to like this one area of the city where they're locked in at night. Like it's, it's not great. So it's kind of that story of like magic, gone except for these certain people and i assume we're gonna like explore getting it back or whatever and i hope we do because i you know it's a fantasy book like i want more of the fantasy elements and i feel like so far we're just getting the like setup of just this world it's like a medieval style world uh medieval fantasy i don't read a ton of like adult fantasy as i said so might not know all the terms so it's a bit of an adjustment for me another if i'm gonna say a critique criticism i feel like what I love about Cassandra Clare is her humor. That's always been something that I've connected with, especially in her characters like Jace, Simon, Magnus. There's not really much humor in this. There's not much comedic relief at all yet. So I hope that we can get to see that at some point. Also, I always love her relationships and we are getting some hints of that. As I kind of said, Connor and Kel have kind of like this romance, I would say. And then Lynn, our female protagonist, does have a really cool excuse me, a close friendship with her friend named Miriam. And Miriam is actually sick. And so Lynn is like pursuing becoming like a, a healer to help her. It's giving Gem and Will maybe, right? I can't help but constantly like make making comparisons to her Shadowhunter books, even though there's not a lot that you can make at this point, I'm just always like looking for them. Interestingly, and I am buddy reading this with someone and I mentioned this to them too, she has made it where like, it's okay to be gay in the society, which you wouldn't really think if it's kind of based on like medieval times. But they mentioned at one point that like kings can have, like can marry men and it can be two kings. And like same with queens, they can marry a woman if they want and have it be two queens. So that was kind of fun. The gays can finally rest. The gays can finally be at peace in this series. There's still sexism though. There's still the women like Lynn are still dealing with that. And mainly there seems to be this prejudice against ashkar people that seems to be the biggest thing there's gonna be like some class classism issues i guess i think that's enough for this check-in i as i said i'm gonna make it spoiler free but this first check-in i am giving some details just because you know it's the first 100 pages but yeah let's read the rest All right, I have read another 100 pages of Swordcatcher. I feel like I am enjoying it even more than the first 100 pages, as would be expected. We're getting some hints of what the romances could be. Well, not, not that much. I, I am a little confused of like what the main romance is going to be. I thought it would be between our two main characters, Kel and Lynn, but we have gotten a little bit of a different love story going on with Kel. I actually kind of ship it. It's a little bit angsty, but I'm liking that. And then I think there's still hope for Kel and Lynn to be the main romance though. And our characters did just meet in the last chapter I read. So I think the story is gonna really pick up now that our main characters have actually met each other and their stories are gonna get more entwined. I think it's gonna get better and better from here. Another cool thing that happened was we were introduced to this character called the Rag Picker King, I think is his name. And he's basically like the king of the streets. He was only introduced briefly. We just got this one scene with him, but I'm like, okay, this is intriguing to me. This character seems like he's going to be a little bit of the star of this book, similar to how like Magnus kind of stands out in the Mortal Instruments, even though he's like more off to the side. At first, I feel like this is our Magnus character. Like this is the one people are gonna like and he's gonna bring more of that comedic relief. Again, we only saw this little glimpse at him, but I think he's like, as I said, gonna be the star. <laughs> 
for me anyways still tons of info that we are getting constantly but i'm not feeling as overwhelmed we're also getting these little excerpts in between chapters like on this page here from this old ancient book that is like some sort of like historical book in this world just having those little passages is really helping to kind of build out the world building and the context of a lot of the magic especially that has been fun we're learning a lot more about the magic despite it being banned and all that uh, having those kind of flashbacks to what it used to be like before it got destroyed has been very cool to learn about it does throw me off a little bit we had our main characters go to this kind of like a brothel or like some sort of party and there was like a lot of hooking up and stuff going on and in my head i still picture cassandra claire's characters as like teenagers even though they are adults and they're 23 in this book it's still kind of funny to like wrap my head around seeing that and yeah i just think this book is you know saying some interesting things about prejudice and racism and classism and sexism and the dangers of having too much power how people just get power hungry and selfish and all these types of interesting things are being explored within this world and these characters so i guess that's all i have to say for now i'll check back in in another 100 pages maybe it's a peach and another peach Alright, hey, I am 300 pages into the book now, so that's halfway through. I'm really enjoying it. I feel like I'm enjoying it more and more as we get more into it. We're getting so much more like character interactions, especially between our main two characters, and there's way more crossover between the plot for both of them. I feel like the first 200 pages were really just setting up so much stuff in this world and the character bases, but now we're actually getting into the plot and like the darker side of this world and the criminal world and and the rag picker king my man has been in it a lot so i've really been enjoying that it's just going very well and there have been a few more like funny moments and stuff like that as these characters interact i'm quite liking it and i'm glad i actually don't have very many plans for the rest of the weekend so i think i can really make good progress and read a lot still confused about what the like main romance is going to be though because i still do see potential love interests for both of our main characters so i don't know if they're going to have like separate romances or if it's going to be a romance between them. another check-in as i'm 400 pages in now it is sunday i started this vlog on wednesday basically i'm still loving the book i wanted to mention there is a little bit of a mystery of a person's identity kind of thing or there was a mystery then it kind of got revealed who this person is but i still have this extra theory or a couple theories of what could be going on with this person so i just wanted to mention that and kind of say it in case it gets revealed later but yeah so just so you know there is kind of this intrigue and like mystery surrounding something in the plot and like who the villain is in this story so that is something i'm holding out hope for that some of my theories will be correct and that we'll get some sort of fun like reveal and plot twist otherwise we are just still getting good character stuff kind of similar stuff i mentioned in the last update of our main characters interacting i am more convinced now that our main two characters kel and lynn are not actually love interest i am thinking that's going to be more of a friendship and as i've said before i think they're both going to have their different love stories and it's not necessarily each other so that's something i've kind of figured out of course it could still change over the series i don't know how many books this is going to be and i don't know if i've mentioned the character antonetta is this like falling but i'm really really liking her character we're not seeing a ton of her but i feel like she could definitely be a favorite so if you have read this book let me know down below like who your favorite characters are i definitely would be interested also connor i found to be quite an interesting character that's the prince 
He was getting pretty unlikable actually, but I think he's gonna be that type of character that's getting a redemption arc a little bit. However, I do wanna say, I think her Shadowhunter series just did feel more unique to me. I do think this series is a little bit derivative like it has a lot of stuff that i think is seen in a lot of fantasies again not that i read a ton of adult fantasy but just with i don't know it just has a lot of i feel fantasy tropes and things so i i do feel like her shadowhunter books are a little bit more unique more special but still enjoying this So I have 100 pages left and I am happy to just keep reading the whole day, honestly. I'm really, really into it right now. We've had a lot of drama, a lot of interesting things going on. We've had kisses. We've had with this mystery sort of continuing that I'm very, very curious to see what happens with that mystery. Oh, and we also had this little like prophecy thing, which... I always find very intriguing just having this prophecy like in the first book of a series and then you're like dying to see how it actually like comes to fruition so we had one of those um about like betrayal that's gonna happen between these two characters that are very close right now so i love that i love like friends turning to like enemies in the future like a merlin and morgana kind of thing so yeah i'm just gonna keep reading guys i finished sword catcher last night as i said in the last update i just couldn't stop reading and i did make it to the end there was a bunch of action there were deaths again see why george R. R. martin might be a fan of this there was some murdering there were twists there's still some storylines that are left on a cliffhanger as you can imagine it's a series we still have a mystery surrounding the antagonist which i alluded to before so i am still hooked and wondering what's going to come of that in the future books i feel like i've been saying the word interesting so much in this vlog that it was really annoying me when i was looking back at my clips but i just am so interested in what's been going on in this book and i just really had a good time that i think i'm gonna rate it five stars i didn't necessarily expect that i would rate it that high when i first started it you guys saw me i was kind of overwhelmed with all the info we were getting and I wasn't totally connecting like from page one. But as I said before, get at least like two to 300 pages in and I think you'll be hooked. By the end, I just felt like I really understood this world a lot. I was in it, very engrossed, and I am really liking all the characters as well. I forget if I said this already, but I wanted to say the tropes for some of the romances in this in case you're wondering. We do have enemies to lovers and we do have friends to lovers. My tripod keeps falling anyway so i think i said what i need to say about this book so basically i do recommend it for if you were a fan of her other books her other shadow under books i think she has carried over you know a lot of that stuff that you probably like like having really good characters and romances and there being action and i think she added some new stuff in here as well with this being you know not an urban fantasy so it's not taking place in our world so it can do some different things so that's gonna be the end of this vlog i hope you guys have enjoyed spending the last few days with me reading this book let me know if you are going to be picking this up or not but definitely let me know if, if you have already read it and what thoughts you're having i would love to talk to you about it in the comments who your favorite characters are and what sort of theories you are having but thank you so much for watching i hope you'll subscribe for future book reviews and reading vlogs and i'll catch you next time bye